All right, Kevin, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us again. You're always a delight to have. Um, not only do you understand sort of movies, production, media, and, you know, all of these great things, but you understand what's going on in culture and in our nation. And we're kind of watching what's happening in the USA. It's a bit of a mess right now, and we're concerned. Well, the late great Andrew Breitbart was a dear friend of ours, and um, he's the first one. I, maybe someone said it before him, but he was the first time I ever heard, you know, that politics runs downstream from culture. Who runs the culture? Well, Hollywood does. And certainly in Washington, I mean, you see the power of Hollywood. Walt Disney said back in the 1950s, movies and television will influence our youth. Well, gee was what, what, what do you think? Do you think there's any, anything, any truth to that? I think Walt is flipping his grave over what Disney is doing to his name because it's insane. They're looking at a $1.4 billion loss. I've heard rumors it's much more than that. I don't know how business can stay in business if they want to keep doing that. But uh, uh, they want to keep spreading this woke crap. And it just goes on and on and on, which doesn't make much sense to me because... Um, you know, look, I get stopped all the time by people that say they, they love my series Hercules and Andromeda, but really now it's God's Not Dead, Soul Surfer, Let There Be Light, uh, Miracle in East Texas. These are what people, you know, please keep making movies like that. There's 80 million homes in America alone, 80 million homes that want the kind of product I do or, or what the Irwin brothers do, uh, what the Kendrick brothers do with their movies. And it's, it's, it's amazing to me that a Hollywood... Um, still doesn't want to pay attention to that and do anything with it. They just want to keep pushing their agenda and pushing their, their message of anger and hate and divisiveness and uh, murder. Uh, it's just, it's weird to me. And I, I, it has to be on purpose. I mean, look, during Trump's four years in office, we had 1.4 million people illegally come to America over four years. Trump is approaching, I mean, Biden is approaching 10 million people. And they've already come out with estimates from anywhere from 500,000 to 800,000 those are terrorists. They keep, I love how the left keeps going, these are families trying to get to a better life. You see, I've seen the videos. My wife went down there to McAllen, Texas. A friend of hers is doing a documentary on this. And she's got video footage. 90% of these are 15 to 35 year old men, fighting age, young you know, teenagers up to men. This is crazy what's going on. And we are setting ourselves up. I know we're setting ourselves up for something really uh, not good down the road here with what's what's coming into our country, and the you know the amount of uh, you know we let people go into stores and take a thousand dollars. Yep, like these people shoplifting are going to make sure that oh that was nine that was over a thousand we can't take that. I mean, <laughs> right? Uh, I can't remember. I said something alone in New York City. It's in the billions of dollars of stolen goods. Wow. Why do you think businesses are closing down and our government does nothing about it? Why? It's got to be on purpose. You got Fauci with the whole crazy. By the way, I'm a golfer. I replaced the other F word in the golf course for bad shot with Fauci. So when a bad shot, I yell out the word Fauci. Well, look, it's got an F, it's got a U in there, it's got a C. So it's and it's Fauci. really bad. <laughs> well, it's and it means it's something crazy. really bad. I like it. He should be Fauci. in prison. He should right. be in prison. Everything, everything yes. that I was saying You're that right. got me taken off of Facebook has now, my conspiracy theories have now all come true. And even right. Fauci came out a month ago and said that masks were really useless. And we know they were, all of us knew they were, but people are sheep and they will do anything the government says. And it's just pathetic to see what's happening in your country, my country, and yeah. really countries around the world. It is, and I was concerned because I saw Laura Ingram reporting and Hannity mentioned it too, but 26,000 mm -hmm. like young Chinese military age men, like yeah. that, that's bizarre. Yeah, why? Why are they coming across? I saw yeah. the, I saw the video footage on that, but yeah. don't say anything. The biggest killer is apathy. People just don't do anything. We live in a very pathetic, impatient world, and they just go, "Oh well, moving on. Let them do what they're doing." And then when something horrific happens, they all scratch their heads and go, "How did this happen? How did this happen?" And then they'll find a way to blame the conservatives. And it's just it's they do that all the time. It's it, the, the policies of the liberal, democratic, progressive. Insane, insane party in, in this country, everything that they push on us, they find a way to blame the right for somewhere down the road. Biden was on TV recently blaming um, Trump and the mega supporters for the problem at the border. And you're going, and it's just, they say it and people just believe it. And you're kind of going, wait a minute. What do you mean in three years, this guy's letting five times more people into the country and you're going to blame Trump and the mega Republicans for that? It's just, it's, it's, it's crazy. I feel like it's the Truman Show, Kevin, because um, yeah, uh, it's not believable. Like he's up there saying he's going to run in 2024 and he's got his, nah, he his, his, you know, his, you know, like, 
I mean, right, you don't think he will. It doesn't I have sense. a good idea. You know, it's going to be Newsom, and it might even be uh, Obama? Michael, Ob I mean, Michelle Obama. <laughs> That's who it might be. I caught that, yeah. Michelle Obama. Well, hey, I mean, I, 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 got, I got on tape here, I got three times when Obama, and they asked, how's your wife doing? He goes, Michael's doing, I mean, Michelle's doing great. So you can take that for what you want. I don't right? know. I, I'm, I'm not making any insinuations here. <laughs> Well, I'm hearing Michelle Obama maybe too, and, and, and that might be their best. Sure. I mean, uh, Newsom, uh, you know, maybe he should get a little bit more experience and wait till uh, 2020. Well, you know, but... he's, a, he's a damn good speaker. I'll give him that. He's a damn good speaker. But look what he's done to the state of California. We oh. left five years ago. They turned that state into a, in a terrorist zone. It's just pathetic. I got buddies who are still there in L.A. and some up in San Francisco, and they said the crime is rampant. They don't, even my friends in New York said after, when it's dark out, they don't go out anymore. They don't go out. They're prisoners in their own place place now from what the governments have set up there. The mayor of New York City is giving, uh, what is it? I don't know what it is. How many thousand? It was something like 50 some million dollars in debit cards to illegal aliens. Meanwhile, the homeless Americans living in the street get nothing. Everything they're doing, none of this makes any sense at all. And yet they, nobody questions it. They just go on and on and on and go on. Look, I, uh, Newsom is... The, the guy has destroyed that state, and yet people still vote for him because he's a good-looking dude with nice hair. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's just like our Canadian yeah. prime minister, and his hair's getting worse. You know, like it's not—it's just not able to pull him through all of the nonsense that we're hitting. Um, Who is I, that? I, Fidel? Is that Fidel Trudeau? What's his name? Uh, yeah, you know everything. I You're get, following. I get all this information from my Canadian friends, by the way. Okay, right. they're the ones feeding me this stuff. <laughs> Yeah, we do have our questions, and uh, it's just, you know, shocking yeah. uh, pictures that look the same and everything. So whatever it is, he's a chip off the old block, you know, and it's been it's been a tough go. But what do you think? Um, uh, we want to get into talking about your amazing movie that's coming up, but do you think we're, we're heading towards times like we see that the, it's heating up in the Middle East with Israel? I'm sure you've been watching that. Yeah. I've been taking some heat on my support for Israel being able to, you know, define uh, their borders and uh, defend uh, you know, what has happened with Hamas against them. It's it's a very difficult situation. Do people, well, see, the mainstream media is not going to report. I've seen plenty of videos with Palestinians saying, please, the Israel people have been wonderful to us. It's Hamas that is a terror. And then you got you got people in America, you've got the gays in America marching down the street and saying queers for Hamas. That is like okay. saying black people saying we're for the KKK. I mean, it's 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 mind blowing. But once again, it's brainwashing an American public education system. Our system sucks. It's absolutely horrible, and uh, we we need to get it out of government hands. Public education in America is pathetic. I'm sure the education in your country is far better than it is here in America. But we've been brainwashing kids from kindergarten to universities. Look. When Bill Maher comes out, and I used to be, I was on Bill Maher's Politically Incorrect show back in the 90s three times during that decade. I was on that show. And I know he's always been a lefty, but I'll tell you, he's a JFK lefty. He believes in what Kennedy believed in. And there's a lot of people that still like JFK. Well, if you listen, look at JFK's inauguration speech, and I, I look at it from 1960, it's easy to see it, and listen to him talk. There's not one Democrat that talks that way today. In fact, he ends that speech by saying, ask not what your government can do for you, but what you, not ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Is there any Democrat saying that today? No, mm -hmm. they want cradle to grave responsibility for your life. They know how to spend your uh, hard-earned money better than you do. That's why they want to take 60% of everything you make. They'll let you keep five months of work, but the other seven months you work for the government. And it's insane that we keep fighting this or not fighting it. And Bill Mark, even Bill Mark said recently, do not send your children to American universities. So wow. th there's a tipping point happening here. People are waking up slowly, but they're waking up. There, is, there really is. I do appreciate um, his, his rare comments, you know, where he seems to be um, uh, understanding that something very uh, evil is going on. Uh, it was shocking to me oh, yeah. when he kind of supported uh, Biden. He thought Biden was doing a great job, you know, a couple months ago. But then he'll come <laughs> out and he knows like something's wrong, you know, and you think, what, what are you saying? Like, yeah. that's not believable. Yeah. I want to know how he's doing a good job. He's got the lowest ratings any, anybody's ever had. <laughs> yeah. Kamala Harris, who's just, I mean, a, a, an idiot. I mean, anybody can have her job and do better than what she's doing. She has lower yeah, ratings right. than anybody has ever had as a politician. Yeah. And all you get to do is listen to her speech. She can't talk yeah. whatsoever. Here's a woman four years ago 
when she was up on the uh, Democrat primary, she was one of 13 people running against Biden to get the nomination for the Democratic vice pre uh, presidency. She was the first one voted off by the Democrats. She had less than 2% of the vote. That means over 98% of people in the Democrat party did not want her as president. And here she is a heartbeat away from becoming a president. I have no problem with the female president whatsoever. Yeah. I think there's some wonderful people out there that can do a better job than what's going on in our pop. I think both parties have a problem. I think both parties are, are crazy and there's a, lot of, there's a lot of corruption on both sides. But uh, to me, it's, I hate saying to pick the lesser two evils, but we have a lot of rhinos in our, in our Congress as well that yes. they pretend to be Republican, but they are not. What do you think about term limits, um, Kevin? Like, like if people I'm had poor. term limits, yeah. Yeah. Would probably... why, don't we, why, don't, why, don't we, why aren't we able to vote for that? Mm -hmm. why, is, why does the president at the most gets eight years, at the most, okay? But these senators can be in there for 60 years and just drool their way down the hallways before they pass out and still vote. Yeah, it's, you, get, you know what? Eight years tops. That's what eight years tops. And we, working on a, on, a, on, a, on a schedule, graduation schedule, so every election, 25% of them got to go. Their eight years is up. And why don't we get the vote on that? Why is that? It's supposed to be we the people. We don't teach civics in our schools anymore. And uh, there's a lot of things we don't teach in school. We took physical education out because, God forbid, kids work out. Because when you work out, your attention levels and retention levels spike. But we're not going to have that. We want kids to have chips and soda and just get fat and lazy. We're doing a great job of doing that as well. Yeah, well, um, loss is going wrong in the school systems for sure. Um, Tucker Carlson yeah. is sure making a, a big stand in your country. Um, yeah. What do you think of, of him like an epic rise after being kicked out of Fox? Well, he was great. I know Tucker very well. I can text him right now. He'll text me back when he's oh, got cool. time to do it in the same day. Uh, yeah. Great guy. Um, he spends a lot of time down here in Florida. Not for me. He lives on the other side of the state. But um, when he worked his way up through Fox, I could tell back in the day because I started going Fox back in, back in the late 90s when I was still doing Hercules. I was getting invited to be on Fox to talk about the show. And I saw his rise. And I don't, it's, something happened within there because Fox is getting a little more liberal too. And uh, they, they booted him out. Well, he's doing much better now than he ever was. And the people, want, people love him. It, it's, it's him and Joe Rogan in America. I mean, those are the guys people want to listen to and watch all the time. So maybe they should run for president and vice president. Well, you, you could almost see that happening. Um, Tucker Carlson would probably be an incredible president, personally. I mean, I, I would vote for him yeah. nonstop. Um, yeah, I'm like I'm dual citizen, so I pay a lot of attention to what's happening. But uh, I'm, I'm just concerned um, as well, though, that it, it does seem that media is captured and we need really good. We need good people like you that are going to be doing great things. And I know you're going down to the um, the NRB this coming week yep. and all that. You know, I'm interested in your your set uh, behind you there. That is a very cool sword and, and the things that you've got up there. Any meaning to all of that? Well, that that uh, that would be the, the very, very last day in seven years on Hercules. Um, by season three, we're the most watched TV show in the world for five straight years. We held that. We're in 176 countries on the very last day of filming. A uh, very emotional day for me because it's family. You know, you're working 12 to 14 hours a day, uh, five days a week, sometimes six days a week for me um, on that show. And that becomes your family. And uh, when it was the end to say goodbye to everybody, it was very emotional. And we had a big party, like 2,000 people there. Everybody that was on the show in some way, on either side of the camera, uh, showed up with a big party, with a big band. Uh, and they gave me that on the very last day of filming from my, my, uh, my um, props crew. And it says, it's got the dates on there. So the seven years in Hercules starting in 1993. And it says, the, um, the journey may be over, but the legend lives on. That's engraved on there. So wow. uh, it's, it's pretty cool. So that's... My, my wall is a tribute to a lot of different things. I mean, mm. behind me with that, that painting of the, uh, the helicopter and the American yeah. flag was from, a, uh, was from a, um, a sergeant in Afghanistan from America saying that they watch Hercules all the time before they go into war. And uh, Herc was very, was very uh, important to them. That Chinook helicopter, he's the commander of a Chinook helicopter there. And uh, they also sent me the flag that flew in the battle with them. I have it hanging in my, my gymnasium as a reminder every day that, you know, they called me the hero. I said, dude, guys, I'm just a stupid actor. Uh, you know, I, I, I had great stunt guys making me look like a stud. And if I screw up, 
uh, on a take, I get a second, I get a second chance. Those guys yeah. don't, you know, they go into battle. They don't know if they're going to come out alive or wounded or whatever. So those are the real heroes, you know, whether they're Canadian military, American military, whatever they may be when they're, when they're fighting for freedom across this, uh, uh, crazy world we're living in. They're the ones that we got to uh, be thankful for. Mm, very nice. Um, you know, not everybody knows your story. I mean, what you get to do right now is follow your passion and make these incredible movies mm. that families really need. But like you came from a place of having this uh, very uh, well-received, you know, series on Hercules and you were top of your game to being really like uh, cancel culture because you, you dared to speak yeah. out. So that was quite a journey. Yeah, I think I'm the original cancel culture victim about 12 mm. years ago before it became a term. My manager and agent called me in when I was in L.A. and uh, uh, they said that we can't work with anymore because of being a conservative. <laughs> and I had to laugh. The guy said, you know, you're the ones who scream for tolerance. You're the ones who scream for freedom of speech. But they're, they're hypocrites, uh, just like most of Washington, D.C. And uh, freedom of speech and, and uh, tolerance is a one way street with these people. If you don't agree with them, you're going to kick get in it. They're going to kick you out. Well, you know what? I've been in business a long time. Hollywood owes me nothing. So I, I formed Sorbo Studios. Please go to sorbostudios.com. You can sign up there. Um, I've been doing my own movies now for the last 11 years. I've been averaging about four or five movies a year, independent movies, whether through Sorbo Studios or other independent studios that come to me and say, Hey, we got this movie. So I've been working just fine without Hollywood and I'm doing movies that Hollywood used to do. You know, I've been movies like Soul Surfer, What If, God's Not Dead, Left Behind, Rise of the Antichrist, uh, my most recent one, Miracle in East Texas. I've got five in post-production that are going to be coming out over this year and next year, two documentaries. I'm staying busy. I can't complain. I'm staying busy doing what I want to do. I do movies that Hollywood used to do, movies that have love, hope, laughter, redemption, faith, things that Hollywood used to do. They don't have to be Christian movies, just movies that give people hope and give people a chance to, to a escape all the hate and anger and, and, and death in this world, you know? So I'm just, I just, you know, it's just, I got a whole new door opened up to me and I, I'm having a blast going down it. Yeah, that's that's so fantastic. And, and we're just so grateful for what you're doing. We've got a, a trailer from uh, the Firing Squad and uh, we'd like yep. to look at it and talk to you about this. Wow. Tell us about this one. Well, the real story is that younger gentleman they kept showing is a London actor. He's fantastic. Um, I, I play, a, pa I play a, a, a prisoner turned pastor. True story about my character um, that uh, he was, uh, he murdered somebody in his 20s. He was on the death row for like 40 years. And uh, during that time, he found God and he started preaching to different people, you know, all the inmates in there. And he actually grew a church within the prison. And before he's executed, he was able to help out uh, James Parrington's character, uh, Peter Lone's character, uh, Peter Lone, the character he played, uh, to find God and find peace before he was executed as well. So, um, you know, Cooper Gooding Jr. is in this movie. He was amazing. And um, it's just, it's a wonderful, heartfelt story. Tim Che directed it, produces it. Um, he's able to, I mean, it, it was, it was fun because we shot in Florida, not many movies shoot in Florida. So, uh, they don't have the biggest tax credit in the world. Everybody wants to go to go either to uh, New Mexico or to Alabama, Oklahoma, I mean, uh, or, uh, or Georgia, which is number one in the country right now. So it was fun to be able to sleep in my own bed every night, coming back home filming, but, um, it's a touching story. It's going to be out in August. I know we got a big premiere in LA. Got to fly back there. I left, I escaped California over five years ago. I love living mm. here in the state of Florida. It's been fantastic. It's been a great move for me in many ways. 
And uh, I was ready to get out of there anyway. They've really wrecked a beautiful state. I do miss my home there. I miss my golf course there, but uh, mm -hmm. there's a lot of golfing here as well. So it's, yeah. it's all good. But um, it's, it's, I've been blessed to, to keep, on, keep on working and keep making movies. You know, I, I do see that. Like, you've really been blessed. I'm sure you wouldn't trade any of the sacrifice, any of the, you know, people have uh, slammed you or they attempt to, you know, um, discredit you because of your positions on social issues or whatever, or being a Christian or whatever it is. But in actual fact, God has just used all of that to to put you right in the place. Uh, he's, he's kind of like stopped everything else so that you can focus right exactly where you're supposed to be. And this is so valuable. Um, like my, my husband and I were watching, you know, movies here and there with our son and and, uh, you know, he's old enough to see anything there is and make, make, can make all of his own choices. But sometimes it's so awful. Like, you, you just don't want to watch that. Yeah. You know, like families I just can't stopped. sit and have a movie. I get stopped all the time by people. And they, they thank me for the movies I do. And every movie set I've been, every single one the last six years, seven years, I get another actor. I get a, a, a director or a camera guy or somebody comes up to me and says, thank you for being a voice for us. And I will be a voice for yourself, man. Stop being afraid. Stop being a sheep. You know, we got to wake up the lines out there. And they all say the same thing. Oh, man, I'll, I'll, I'll get blacklisted like you. And I said, you know, I'm not getting invited to do big Hollywood movies anymore, big TV shows anymore. That's fine. That's fine. You know, I had a great run with the bigger world, but I'm happy doing what I'm doing. And I said, I'm still making movies, guys. I'm still in the industry. I get through Sorbo Studios. I get um, emails all the time from Big time camera guys, lighting guys, makeup, wardrobe, whatever. People saying, look, I do these big movies for Disney or Universal, but I'm tired of the message. I love what you're doing. I say, guys, we're like three or four million dollar budget movies. That's catering budget in Pirates of the Caribbean, you know, and those are three hundred million dollar movies. I said, I can't afford to pay. They said, we don't care. Just pay us. When I take when I direct, I take the DGA minimum. I'm still in the director's union, still in the screen actors. I take the minimum that they, you have to take as an actor, the minimum you have to take as a director. I want to make these movies. I, want to, I get stopped by people saying, your movies, I became a Christian because of your movies. I became, you know, I love the movies that you're doing. I love this. So to me, it's like I know I'm down the right path and doing the right thing because the world, like I said, people can bash me all the way. They can come after me all they want. These are people who hate themselves. They hate their lives. There's a common denominator with them. I can promise you this. I'd love to do a documentary on these people. Really, like Antifa members or BLM members or any people in that world that are just trolls looking to go after people like you and me and attack us. These people look in the mirror and hate what they see. And that's sad to me that these people have no hope. They have no faith in their lives. They probably don't like, they probably don't have a job. They're probably being paid by George Soros and collecting unemployment at the same time. And they're 36 years old living in their mom's basement. I mean, I know there's a common denominator with these guys. And it's a pretty sad, pathetic way to go through life with no hope and no, no dreams. And they want to blame their failures on people like you and me and everybody else. They don't want to take responsibility for themselves. That's not my problem. That's their problem. Kevin, you've been so generous with your time. Uh, one final question that just, uh, you know, comes to me about yeah. you is when did you decide that you would, that you would really speak out and you would not be a coward? Um, like when you grew up, were your parents strong standards for Christian values? And were you always sort of like, um, you know, willing to speak your mind? Or was there one certain time and issue that you just went, that's it. I got to, I got to speak. No, you know, I just kind of grew up with it. I mean, I grew up in a very Democrat state, a very not liberal state. Minnesota's turned into California. Minnesota's much worse now than it was when I when I was there. But they were that was a Hubert Humphrey, Walter Mondale place. You know, Hubert Humphrey is the vice president, and uh, it, to me, it was uh, the first time I could vote was in 1980 when I was old enough to vote for the first time. I voted for Ronald Reagan, and my parents were like, "What?" And I said, this Jimmy Carter guy is going to go down as one of the worst presidents we've ever had. And I was right until Obama and certainly when Biden came along. And uh, I voted, I voted Demic I mean, uh, Republican ever since. I've been looking at the, look, I didn't mind Bill Clinton. I wouldn't, I didn't vote for him the second time around, first time around. Second time around, I said, you know what? He's the last Democrat president that came pretty down the middle. He was smart enough to keep building up on what Reagan had done his eight years. And Bush came for one, 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 uh, four years after that, and they, you know, uh, Clinton beat him. But Clinton, uh, Clinton really won with the lowest amount of percentage vote of anybody ever at thirty-eight percent. And because Ross Perot was running, and he took a, he took like twenty percent of the vote away from Bush. 
But uh, I got to give Clinton credit. He's not like his wife, Hillary. Hillary's evil, beyond evil. And uh, <laughs> Bill was a far better. Oh, my God, she's horrible. I mean, she is just, I, I, I know too much because I know somebody that uh, used to work for them. So that marriage is more of a, a professional marriage than anything else. I don't think there's any love lost in, in within that marriage. So, um, but I, I, I looked at, I, I've always been vocal, always been vocal, but I never got attacked until the last 10 years. Prior to that, it was never, never happened. I mean, I could, Democrats on this movie said, we could talk, you know, I'll oh, do your nitty. Now you're the idiot. We make fun of each other, but at least there was a chance to have civil conversation. Now all it is is them yelling really loud and saying you're wrong and walking away without having anything else. I asked my liberal friends, what, what, okay, what policies of Trump did you hate? Well, he's an asshole. I go, well, that's not a policy. Give me a policy that you hated. <laughs> and I go, did you hate that he made us energy independent, that we were not relying on anybody for oil? And I mean, if we were buying oil, we should have bought it from your country, you know? Um, and uh, we were completely, we closed the border down. Black unemployment, he's a racist. Why was black unemployment the lowest it's ever been? Hispanic unemployment, the lowest it's ever been. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. The minute Biden got in office, what do you do? He took, got rid of all that, got rid of all that. And then we're back to buying oil from countries that hate us. We fund our own wars against ourselves because there's a lot of money in wars and it's really stupid. Anyway, I'm gonna get one more plug in. Yes, my please, yes. My latest book is called The Test of Lionhood, okay? The Test of Lionhood, um, it's from the Bray Books. Please go to braybooks.com. You can get my autograph for free if you join for one year. You get a new book every single month. These, these books really are, 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 are really positive books about shaping the future, not only Ameri uh, future uh, generation of Americans, hopefully Canadians as well. It's, there, it, it, it's a way to find you know, freedom and truth, um, humility, bravery, courage. My book is about courage, and it's about letting kids grow up to be kids. Let kids, when they be, if you're 18 years old, old enough to take a bullet to defend your country, then you're old enough to decide if you want to change your gender. Don't do this to kids that are five years old. And you got a lot of people in that transgender world coming. There's no bash on transgenderism in here, but I got bashed for writing the book because it's pro-child. So then I got attacked by the alphabet crowd, and I said, no, 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 this isn't anti-anything, and it doesn't bash any single group in here at all. I'm pro-child. That's what the book's about, is just letting kids grow up to be kids when they're old enough in their lives. I always, I always joke, I knew Bruce Jenner, Caitlyn Jenner. I, I, knew, I golfed with Jenner many times. And he waited, he, she waited until he was 60 to make that change, okay? So, so let kids grow up just to be kids. It's not anti-anything. It's just let kids be kids instead of filling them with all this insanity, what they're doing. There's a great video of this guy in a room and one kid after another comes in. No, nobody there to influence them. They, it's themselves. This guy's sitting at a table and there's a stack of $5,000 here and two Oreo cookies. He says, you can only have one. Every single kid took the cookies. Every single six, seven, eight year old kid and their little brains, they don't go $5,000. I could buy a lot of cookies with that. Didn't think of that. Wow. So you think they can decide what they want to do with their lives in terms of changing sex? I mean, come on. Just silly. I so agree with you. So this is a really good book for parents to have yeah. to to read to their kids. And it's basically about character and just acknowledging. Have your kids read it. They got to learn to read. Yes. Yes. Do you, know, do you know in the state of Oregon, this is how bad we are. I yeah. can't, you can't make this up. The state of Oregon has now said, if you cannot do math and you cannot read, we will still give you a high school diploma. What? Crazy. It is crazy. It is crazy. But you are not. You are awesome. And thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for these uh, movies, many, the firing squad coming out. Uh, thank you for the books. Thank you for your contribution you. to our culture because it's very powerful and meaningful. Uh, we'll talk to you again. Let's and talk. Let's, let's, yep. let's talk Easter week. I have a okay. documentary coming out about okay. the Last Supper. It's called Eating with the Enemy. Wow. 100%. Easter week. I'll let Toby cool. know. Yep. We'll book you. Thank you. Beautiful. Take care. Thanks, All guys. Right.